Hello lovelies, today I am doing spinach. So this is the Creative Veggie Workshop series and uh, this is the fourth one in the series. So there's been cauliflower, broccoli and capsicum and this week we're doing spinach or silver beet. Same, same, I'm using them interchangeably. So I love spinach and um, I think you can just get it in in so many creative different ways and we're gonna do, do four today. Now, I'm going to start with um, a breakfast, sort of a, a, a green smoothie. And what I love about this is that we can make our own almond milk. So lots of people use you know, almond milk, coconut milk, we're trying to get away from dairy, so we're using all the alternatives. But in something like this, you can just do your own. Now, if you don't have a super duper powerful blender like this one here, this is the Vitamix, $1,000, um, amazing. Um, and you've just got a cheaper brand, then instead of just throwing everything in together, I would start with the, um, the almonds and the water and blend that first. So that way um, you are blitzing it down to um, as fine as it'll possibly go. I don't care if there's chunks, but you know, people, some people like it totally smooth, which you probably won't get unless you are using a beautiful blender like this one. Okay, so this recipe, there's your almond milk, and then we want some sweetness. So you can either, I tend to use a banana, like for my breakfast every morning, I have a banana and a stick of celery and half a cup of water, and I blend that, and then I add the other things, and I don't put them in the blender because I like the different textures. So um, your sweetness could be a banana, uh, or it could be, you know, really whatever you want. Um, what am I trying to think of? Strawberries, that kind of stuff. Uh, or some dates. Just make sure that if you are using dates, you take out the pith in the middle. With a blender, a powerful blender like this, it'll it'll blitz it up, and you'll just have these horrible little um, bits in it. Whereas a, a cheaper blender won't be able to tolerate it, and it'll, it'll still be um, it won't get smashed. So there's the sweetness. Um, I do like to put blueberries in. Blueberries are an amazing um, uh, veg uh, vegetable fruit. <laughs> Um, they're full of antioxidants. Blueberries are kind of like the king of the fruits. They're just so amazing. So pop those in. And any type of green, really. So this is where you can put in your kale. This is baby spinach, or you could use the, um, the silver beet. I will chuck in a couple of, I think the recipe says a couple of cups. You do whatever you like. Now the thing is with this, um, what you can also do is is because this will deteriorate really quickly, I would actually um, divide this up into serve size portions and then stick it in your freezer. And same with your bananas. If your bananas start to go a bit brown, um, peel them, put them in little Ziploc bags, and you could actually do this, um, like put your spinach and put your um, blueberries and put your banana all in one little Ziploc bag and have it ready to go for your smoothies. So that's what I would do with those. And so now we are going to blend that in this amazing blender. If it's on. No. Oh, turn it on. As you wanted to blend it to get the smoothness that you liked and then pour it into your bowl for breakfast and then add your oats so whether that's quick oats or um, steel cut oats or um, actually steel cut oats would need to be soaked overnight and then sprinkle some um, sunflower seeds, pumpkin seeds on top of that, and there's your breakfast good to go. Now, I would even make this up the night before and put it in a little jar like this and uh, have that ready and waiting as a quick breakfast on the go. You could make um, a couple of those up. You could even make two or three days in advance with this sort of thing. Um, but that is just a fantastic breakfast. So, there's our first recipe. Alrighty. So the second thing I want to make 
is a gorgeous um, sort of like a coleslaw but with a twist. Just a great way to get some more spinach into us. Now I love this uh, recipe because of the colours. Can you see these amazing colours? Already we've got this beautiful purple carrot, um, cabbage, we've got the carrot, we've got some spring onions, and yes, I did use a food processor to make all of these. If I thought I had to stand and grate carrots and chop cabbage, I would never make it. I'm into quick and easy, so I love the food processor to do that. And those food processors, I mean, you can, you can pick them up for about $100, even less, and they are amazing. So this is just such an amazing, quick recipe. And then we've got our finely sliced. I did use the silver beet for this. So I cut the, the middle out and then I um, sliced that really fine. And we are gonna put that together with my favorite dressing. Now, I love to be using whole foods wherever possible. So using, um, in this case, we're gonna be using a whole orange and we are going to be using tahini. So that's a whole food fat sauce. And we're going to be popping this into a little blender. And the recipe is one orange to one tablespoon of tahini. in and a little bit of herbanair of course I know it's surprising I didn't put herbanair in my smoothie but no all right these little um, ninjas are amazing I just eat so much more of these sort of things because I've got one of these at home on my desk, on my on my desk, on my kitchen bench. Just so easy to whip up anything like your breakfast in the morning. So that's it. This is a fantastic dressing. So that's one orange, one tablespoon of tahini, and a dash of herb in there, and you've got this gorgeous, thick, creamy dressing. And now we're just going to mix all of these together. I'm not going to do it right now, but you'll mix your, um, your cabbage, your grated carrot, your finely sliced your spinach and your spring onion all together with this dressing. And it is absolutely amazing. Have to try it. All right. Okay, number three recipe is a spinach pesto. So really, this is just another, uh, another um, sneaky way of getting some spinach into a favorite dip. So pesto is amazing. I love it because the basil is another really good source of green, a really green. So what we're gonna do here is much the same. When I make, um, whether it's hummus or pesto, I do not add liquid oil. If I'm making a hummus, I will use all the same ingredients like chickpeas, tahini, and the garlic, um, and the lemon juice. And if, I, if it's too thick, I'll just add water until I get the right consistency, not olive oil. And it's the same with the pesto. I um, will play around with it with, and using a little bit of water if I need um, some more fluid to get the right consistency, but not the oil. So the, um, uh, the source of fat in this is going to be your walnuts, or in this case pecans, and the pine nuts. And these, are, these seriously are expensive and I really uh, you know, do try to make things economical. And if these are just not in the budget, then go for something else like um, maybe sunflower seeds or pumpkin seeds or, or whatever seeds are on special. I know they do give a bit of a, you know, a yummy flavour. So with this one, we are going to start with the, um, the two nuts and seeds and blitz those down and um, 
and then add all of the other ingredients. your walnuts or in this case pecans and your pine nuts and then pretty much adding your, um, your basil and in this case we're going to use the baby spinach and the amount of times I've made this and no one even knows that you've got spinach in here Actually, I'm going to put the um, garlic. So you add as much garlic as you like. Some herbamere and the juice of... Start with half a lemon and then see how it goes. And traditionally, your pesto has some usually has parmesan cheese in it. Well, as you know, I tend to use um, nutritional yeast when I want a cheesy flavour, and this just works amazingly. I don't usually measure, but a couple of tablespoons. But if you make it, I mean, you make it and it had, it's not cheesy enough, then it just adds some more. I'm very much a make it, taste it, and then add more of what you need. a little bit more I'll probably have to scrape that around um, and give it a, a few more goes but that is breaking down beautifully oh the smell is amazing and then of course you can use that as a dip or you can freeze small portions and then toss it through your vegetables I mean classically you use the zucchini zoodles um, and toss it through those but really any steamed vegetable you could toss that through and it would just be absolutely divine so another amazing way to get some spinach into you in a, um, a lovely tasty way all right the last thing I'm going to do is a cooked spinach because Spinach is a fantastic source of iron, but only when it's cooked. So spinach has something in it called oxalate, which kind of just like holds on to the iron. So you want to be, but you want to cook it if you're going to rely on spinach as a um, an iron source. But really, in the grand scheme of things, some of both, because the raw spinach has so many good things in it as well that I would just try and have some of both. Don't get too hung up on whether it's cooked or not. Really, at the end of the day, it's just more important that you, than you eat it. And it's like, um, you know, this. I, ideally, I wouldn't be using um, Teflon. I would always try and be using um, stainless steel. But if all I've got is this, then making something in this is much better than going to McDonald's. So, I don't know what that is. So, I have gone back to cooking in water, not oil. So, turn your um, your fry pan or whatever you're using on, and then put. Start off with about a quarter of a cup of water. Wait until that's boiling and then pop your onion in and just start to stir. And what you'll find is that the onion will start to cook, but eventually once all of the water has evaporated, the, the onion will start to go a little bit brown. Now you might, now depending on how much you've got in here and how hot your, um, your fry pan is, you might need to add a, a little bit more water, but just keep on cooking until the onion has cooked and is nice and soft and it's gone a, a nice um, sort of a brownie and it's starting to caramelise. And that way we 
reduce the amount of liquid oil that we're using because we really do want to be getting our healthy fats, so that's your avocados, your nuts and seeds, your olives, from whole food sources and reduce the amount of liquid oil that we're eating. It's just so easy to overconsume when you are having um, liquid forms of fat. So this is um, a great way to reduce it. And then once that's cooked, you're just going to be adding um, your spinach. And I just roughly chopped this. And then we'll just cook that down. And then at the very end, throw in some mint. Now this is fresh mint out of the garden, so it's just lovely little leaves that you can just pop, pop in and chuck those on at the very end, you'd be doing this. And then, once that's all done, just squeeze some lemon through. And this would be absolutely delicious on top of some baked sweet potato or as a side dish with any other vegetables that you're having. But it's just a different way to have spinach and to get more into us. So I hope you've enjoyed today and uh, I hope that has inspired you to get a little bit more creative and add some beautiful green into some of your meals this week. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye.